Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Dipanchu, and I hope you all are doing uh, well. Thank you so much for uh, watching all my videos. I'm getting a lot of uh, good response from everyone. Now, this particular video, uh, uh, I was getting a lot of uh, comments on LinkedIn uh, that that you, I think, you forgot or you missed to tell us like how we will automate the Kubernetes forensics. I actually uploaded the shell script, but I think uh, some people are facing some issues in the script. So I thought of uh, creating the video on automating the Kubernetes forensics. Otherwise, my next video would have been on the Kubernetes Red Team. I have uploaded uh, my first lab basically on Kubernetes uh, Red Team uh, on GitHub, but I will officially publish that on Wednesday, uh, coming Wednesday basically. Uh, there is little bit of formatting that is left, but I have still uploaded it on the GitHub. Uh, I will do some code changes and all from the back end and I will uh, uh, you know, push the changes, or I will merge the changes into the into the uh, uh, into into the JIT repos by maximum by Tuesday, so you all can enjoy and leverage your skills in Kubernetes Red Team. So this particular video uh, is basically on Kubernetes uh, uh, forensics, uh, how we can automate the Kubernetes forensics, and how we can generate a report. So this will be a text-based report, but uh, you can ju you can just uh, tweak uh, the text-based reports into PDFs. That is very easy. You can generate your PDF reports as well. So uh, I will deploy again the Kubernetes cluster today because this is a new video which I am creating basically. So uh, we will start from the fresh uh, by deploying the Kubernetes cluster. So this is where we have left our Kubernetes uh, at that day. So we will start by uh, by creating the cluster using the kind. So let me just uh, create the cluster. Give it a minute. It will be created. So basically, uh, till the time the cluster is being deployed, let me let me go through this uh, the particular code. The code is very simple. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, as my style of writing any type of code, whether it is shell script or Python or you know or designing in C++, I always like to design uh, or write the codes in a simpler way so that everybody understands. Even if sometimes my code is little bit big, but my codes are very simple to understand. So here uh, it is a shell script. Basically, you can convert the shell script into the executables if you are running it in Windows as well. If you want, I will. Create the executable version of this by writing this into Python as well. That's not a big problem. Uh, so this is a Kubernetes script. So it is uh, the very first thing. It is setting up the base report. Basically, the name of the report. You can keep it uh, in the same way. Now I have introduced the date and the time format on which date this particular report was being generated or was being saved. Then just a little bit of branding that is created by me. So here it will check for all the ports, uh, all the ports that are being there. It will do the initial uh, reconnaissance, get all the ports. Now describe ports. Basically, uh, if reverse shell exists, you know, then it will check for all the nodes, all the services, endpoints. Uh, it will check for the pod in the JSON format, you know, for privilege threat hunting. It will check for the host network. It will check for all the cron jobs that are being running inside it. Let me just uh, do a small, oh sorry, word wrap so it is easy for everyone to understand. So it will check for all the uh, you know cron jobs that are being created by the back uh, backdoor shell. Then any type of secrets, uh, if it is uh, there are any type of secrets that are being stored in the uh, you know in the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, that are being stored by the attacker, you know, for 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 some exfiltration and all. Uh, then any type of service views that has happened in the Kubernetes cluster, maybe a pod which was compromised and uh, having the reverse shell to the attacker's machine, you know, the uh, and it will check for any type of uh, service that was being abused to take the reverse shell to the attacker's machine. Then it will check for all the privileged uh, pods, and then it will check for any sort of CVE. For CVE, basically, I'm using the Trivi. You can use any other uh, tool as well. I I like Trivi a lot. I can even uh, do a lot of uh, 
uh, mergings in the tree. So I like tree a lot. You can go for any other tool as well. Uh, okay, then it will check for any, what sort of mount points are there. At the uh, the when I will be uh, when I will be creating videos on Red Team, Kubernetes Red Team as well. I will showcase that how attackers leverages the mount points. Uh, you know, uh, because it's it's a really really uh, critical step when attackers actually create the mount points for the whole file system, so that they can do the privilege escalation and uh, escape to the container, or maybe they are, or if there is Docker in the Docker that is running, they can uh, abuse those particular mount points and can become the root of the host. So. Checking mount points is very very critical. Then any sort of uh, risky capabilities. So capabilities uh, in in Linux system is uh, like you know it's defining the what sort of capabilities the particular user on the host machine has. Okay. Uh, then it will check for any anonymous access to any of the API server. Maybe uh, the API uh, maybe the uh, from the API server the attacker has given the command into the worker node. To run certain side of jobs inside the inside some malicious pods which are being compromised, it will check for that. Then it will check for certain CVs. You can go for n number of CVs. I just gave it as an example. Then it will go. It will use the TV to scan all the images on the uh, on the Kubernetes cluster. Then it will check for any sort of network behavior. It will do the uh, audit log analysis and then it will save the results in the Report. Okay, so let's see how it will uh, work on. I think it is still creating the cluster. I don't know, it should not take that much time. But, anyways, uh, I really like you know uh, when you give uh, your comments and feedbacks about my videos. I really uh, enjoy reading it and it gives me boost uh, you know to create more and more content like that. Let me pause the video for some or let it run. So AI yeah, it is creating. So just give it a minute. It will start working. Okay. So our cluster is ready. Let's just check. Yes, the cluster is running on with the name is this, and the control tool is running on port three one three one port. Now let's start deploying our labs. So ls minus one kubectl apply minus f. Uh, you can uh, deploy all the files uh, with this. Uh, let me just my reverse shell has already been started. Eighty eighty is there. Let me first go with the reverse shell in the same order. Okay. Then kubectl apply. Then I have token stealer, QCTL apply, minus F, lateral movement, QCTL apply, persistence. QCTL apply minus L secrets one two three four five one two three four five we have that and what we will do we will just give it an executable permissions 
to run it. I would like to suggest over here that you go with all permissions, uh, you know, for this. CH mode 777 so that it doesn't feel any issues. So give it some minute. Uh, it will create all the, uh, you know, it will do all the scan in your environment. So the scan is completed because I have all, it is already cached. So let me just check it. So here we go. If you will just make it a little bit small, it has all, it has done the complete scanning. The automated scanning is very fast. Actually, it, it is already cached in between. So I know. So here is the information that it has, it has given us. Little moment, of course, it will not be ready because it has run already once. The rest all pods are running fine. Now default, it is, uh, the little moment is running under the default node. And the, our cube system is running with the, these, these, uh, uh, these pods basically. Okay. Then it will start describing the pod. It will give us the information on which the uh, pods are running. This is a cluster IP. This is the port number. This is the OS image. This is the internal IP. This is the name of the control plane. Then this is the JSON file. And if you can see, it has already detected the, the malicious file, which has been downloaded on the machine. And you can say that this is the service which ran inside the particular container box. Let's go deeper, what it has identified. It has identified the container DID. It is running on this image. It's finished at this time and started at this time. This is the mount point, very, very important, where, where the complete uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, secrets and where the complete Kubernetes information is being stored. We will exploit this when we will do the red team exercise. We will exploit this for sure because this will be used to, uh, you know, to take the, uh, to take, uh, to, to create a reverse shell, uh, to the attacker machine from the host after doing the privilege escalation. Here we get some other information. Here some tools are being installed by the attacker to take the reverse shell on this particular IP. Then it is installing the netcat, doing bin bash, and this is the traditional uh, reverse shell technique. Here it is. It is running on the image Debian. The log is stored at this location. The name of the API service that is running under uh, running with the API server is this. Scheduler. Cluster, let's go a little bit down. Here it is the container. Here, if you will see, the attacker is trying to steal the tokens from the machine. If you will see the command that is being running over here, that attacker is installing the curl and jq and it is trying to extract the token from these, uh, from the Kubernetes uh, cluster. And now it is giving the token to this particular attacker's IP and the attacker socket address and the logs will be stored in this. Then if we see something given it's here, here the attacker is trying to take uh, to extract the credentials, the DB secret from the image. If you will see this, this is the a command that is being run over here from that as the that attacker is trying to extract the db password from the environment variables and what else what else this is the poor dns file Let me get meta with big. In a D. Cube DNS, replica set. This point is very important. Uh, usually when you are creating the reports, 
you will see on which particular uh, service IP the Kubernetes cluster was running when you are creating the reports to submit in the uh, in the law firms when you are filing a case against the attackers. PKI cluster, the server key is stored here. And I think that's the all uh, it has find out. So this is the con this is the uh, lab. Uh, so this was the pod which attacker created on the control plane and then it tried and this is just Kubernetes information ok so this all for this video you can go ahead and write all your commands and uh, you know all your information in this but uh, I would suggest that uh, that you uh, that you start modifying the script it will also help me uh, you know to to look for uh, certain things which I might have missed uh, it, it's all it all depends upon you know how you are designing your uh, code but really in this video I would uh, also like to you know uh, to showcase you the my basically the coupon so this is the uh, red team lab that I, I have created and uh, which I will publish it on uh, Wednesday, but it is already live. If anybody wants to start exploiting everything, uh, it has almost, I have added almost entire things uh, from a cyber kill chain perspective. Entry point, I have kept it very uh, easy. Uh, you can, uh, uh, you know, you can do a lot of uh, enumeration. Enumeration is the key in any, in any red team activity. Make sure that you start uh, working on this but I will definitely give uh, what we call it as a walkthrough on this so but if you and if, if anybody wants to try it out they can do I am just doing a little bit of formatting uh, by Tuesday this will be live and I will be start sharing the videos on complete Kubernetes Red Team Lab so this all for this video I hope you are enjoying my content if anybody has any feedback, you can just contact me on my LinkedIn or you can post a comment on YouTube. I try to respond to everyone's uh, comments. Thank you everyone and keep watching the content. I hope you enjoyed. Happy weekend.